The St. John's real estate market is complicated and it's putting the squeeze on buyers. So I'm gonna break it down for you so that you can buy or sell with confidence. I have eight points of data that I'm gonna share with you to help form a picture of the market. Stick around for points six, seven, and eight when I discuss price. Hello, I'm Jay Schwartz and I am the Iceberg Realtor. I service the St. John's and Metro area. Let's get into it. All right, so for the first chart, we're taking a look at the May historic count of residential listings for St. John's. Now, the way these listings are tallied is whether they were active during any period of the month. And I went back eight years on this uh, so that we could see the beginning of the decline. Uh, so in 2018, 2019, it's relatively stable, very close to 1700 both years. And then of course in 2020, uh, we all know what happened and this is the beginning of the supply issue that we're having here in St. John's. Um, you can see 2020, there was a significant drop and then a little uptick for 2021 and then it's slowly been declining ever since for the past two years. And you can see that we're near a thousand listings for the month of May this year. And that is a 41% decline from 2018, 2019. So that's quite significant. And now for the next data point I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna show you the total active residential listings for St. John's. And that is, as you can see here, 298. Um, and this is what it looks like on the map when you're looking at uh, this quantity of listings. It does look like a lot, but it's actually quite low for um, St. John's and anybody who's out buying knows that because you don't have a lot of options right now. So for the next data point, I'm gonna show you the active market share by home type of the listings here in St. John's. So of the 298 that I just showed you, uh, there's not a lot of diversity when it comes to uh, the types of home you can buy here in St. John's. Anybody who lives here knows that the majority is single family homes. And you can see that simply by driving through the city. Um, so here in the breakdown, 73% single family home, 12% uh, condominium, and 15% two apartment homes, which are also detached homes, very similar to the single family homes. And mobile and mini homes, there was literally one listing uh, and it's still registered 0%. So anybody who is thinking about moving to St. John's, just know uh, what you're coming here for. You're coming here for uh, big properties, uh, single family homes situated right in the center of that property, uh, either in the suburbs or kind of out in the more rural areas where you're gonna have even bigger pieces of land. The next thing that I wanna discuss with you is why this buyer squeeze is happening. Anybody can identify that the inventory is low overall. Uh, but I also wanna point out to you that of the total listings available, not all of them are desirable. Uh, a certain portion of them have become stale, as I would say. Uh, using the metric median days to sell as my uh, indicator of when a property becomes stale, if it has been on the market longer than that. Uh, I have identified that of the 298 listings, 119 of those properties have gone stale. That's 40% of the listings on the market. So buyers are fighting over that same 60%. And depending on what your criteria are when you're buying, there may only be two, three, four properties to choose from at any given moment. And what's happening is a lot of buyers are having to wait for something they're interested in to come up on market. So, you know, it comes on the market, everybody sees it, everybody jumps on it. Uh, that first weekend, it gets a ton of viewings, it gets multiple offers, and generally the highest bidder wins. So with that in mind, let's take a look now at the listing activity that we experienced over the past month. And we can see 151 new active listings came on, 91 that went to conditional pending, uh, which means they're under contract, uh, but they have conditions that need to be met. Then we've got expired listings. Those simply, they were probably on the market for 60 plus days, maybe 90 days, whatever their contract was with their agent. It came to an end, it expired. A lot of those will get relisted uh, back on market, uh, some at the same price, some at a lower price, hopefully to 
generate some more activity on those listings and actually get a sale. We see 124 sold. So those are properties that actually close. Deals done, those properties are no longer on the market and it could be a while before we see them again. It could be five, seven years before somebody wants to move out of that home again. Or a portion of those could be flips and we might see those back on market later this year or even early next year. Under contract, so that is a property that's in the process of being sold, that's met its conditions, and is simply waiting for the closing date. So those are soon to be sold. Uh, withdrawn, uh, you can see we have a few withdrawns there, and that is just somebody who simply just took their property off the market, whether they had a change of heart or uh, maybe they didn't like the feedback they were getting for their home and they've decided to try again in the future, maybe change something, maybe do some home upgrades and bring it back to the market at another time. So if we take a look at the total, we can see negative 252. That's adding up the new active listings, the conditional pendings, the expires, the solds, the under contracts and the withdrawns. And what that shows me is that we're trending down. The inventory is still continuing to decline and that's making it harder and harder for buyers. It's driving prices up, you know, which is again, making things harder for buyers because you've got the rising interest rates. Um, people are being priced out of the market, which is unfortunate. I don't like to see that, you know, people are looking for homes. I like to see them get in the homes. I like to see them find the home that they can live in for the next 10 plus years. All right, now I'm gonna get into data point number six, which is the beginning of me talking about the price, which is what everybody always wants to talk about. And I'm gonna start with the list to sales price ratio because that is gonna help you, whether you're a buyer or a seller, it's gonna help you understand what to offer on a home, and what to list your home at, or at least relative to the homes that you're seeing on the market at the moment. So we are at an exceptionally high list to sales price ratio at 99.5%. That is quite a quite you know unheard of to be honest, which means home sellers are generally pricing their home at uh, market value, and people are willing to pay that for those homes. So when you're going out and you're viewing the majority of these homes, uh, they're all priced close to what they're going to sell at the moment. Um, it can be quite hard to find that deal that everyone's looking for. And you can see over the past five years, since 2016, that that has been steadily rising. Next, I'm gonna talk about the list price median versus the days on market median and the relation between the two. So over the past five years, we can see that the list price has generally been increasing steadily, uh, whether very little or very much. So in 2018, it goes from about 220,000 and now we're here in 2023 and we're up near 270,000 um, and you can see that as soon as 2020 hit we all know what happened uh, the days on market started to decline quite rapidly and this is driving prices up uh, here the list prices have only gone up you know marginally over the past few years but what we're gonna see on the next chart right here is the median sales price history. So this is ultimately the prices that homes were selling for. And I went way back on this uh, for a particular reason. But if we look from 2018 to 2023, we can see that the sales price has increased quite a lot uh, from 250,000 to 320,000. So homes are selling for quite a bit more than they were five years ago. And I went way back on this so that we can see uh, we're not at an all-time high. Uh, 2014, sales prices were 340,000, and that is still another $20,000 than where we are today. So what does this all mean for you? Well, if you're a buyer, that means being vigilant about finding a property that uh, suits your needs and getting a compelling offer in before the property is gone. And how do you do that? Well, there's a few things you need to do. One is get pre-approved for a mortgage. Uh, I see a lot of hesitance about getting pre-approved for mortgage 
for whatever reason, maybe you think you won't get pre-approved or, um, you know, you're just worried about having to f pull up all those documents and submitting them. Whatever it is, I recommend biting the bullet and getting it done because there's no harm in getting pre-approved. Uh, if anything, it's more beneficial to you. You'll be locked in at the best rate at the given time when you've received your pre-approval in that last 90 days. It's especially important right now as a lot of speculators and economists are anticipating the interest rates rising over the next few announcements because it's been rising in the US and Canada is always soon to follow. Now, if you're a seller, now is a great time to sell. Uh, we're getting as close to asking price as we've ever seen. And if you have a great home, that is priced attractively, there's no reason why you shouldn't get over asking price. So that's the market report. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and comment below. Let me know what you think of the market right now. How has your experience been? Are you having trouble finding the home that you've been looking for? And I'll leave my Calendly link down below. If you're interested in working with me, book a call with me and we will discuss what you're looking for and I'll help you get there. I promise I'm easy to talk to you. All right, have a good one.